Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Welcome to our QuickBooks Online tutorial where we're going to teach you how to enter your company information into QuickBooks Online. Let's get started. Within your QuickBooks Online dashboard, let's click on the cogwheel in the upper right hand corner. This is where you'll go for all of your account settings. Today let's look with our let's work with our account and settings under the your company column. Click on Company in the left menu bar, and now we'll see four different sections we can deal with in, company, in entering or editing our company information. Let's click in the first section, Company Name. So we have two separate fields that we can use for our company name. The top field, Company Name, is what we want to appear on our invoices and sales forms, etc., to our customers. So it's whatever your company name is that you want your customers to see. That might be different then your legal name, which is the second company name to enter. This is the name that appears on your tax returns. Uh, the top item here, your company logo, you can upload a logo and then you'll be able to select it later when you're customizing your invoices and other forms. Uh, to upload a company logo, you can see we've already have one here for Paul's Plumbing, but we can upload a second one by clicking the plus button. Click the plus button again, and now you can browse your computer find the, the graphic that you would like to upload as your logo. Great. And the last field under company name is your EIN or employer identification number. All businesses are required to have an employer identification number except for sole proprietorships. Uh, if you're a sole proprietorship you need to enter your social security number here. That number will then print on all the 1099s and W-2s you issue to vendors and customers. So that's not a great idea so I would highly recommend even if you are a sole proprietorship to go ahead and apply for a separate employer identification number uh, so that you can enter that here and you don't have to expose your social security number to all of your vendors and employees. Okay once we enter our name and our legal name or if the legal name is the same as the company name, we can click that box and then we'll hit save to save our work. Okay, the next section is company type. First field is the tax form. So choose the type of tax form that you file. Paul's Plumbing, we're going to say, is a sole proprietorship, so they file 1040, but you also have form 1065, 1120S, 1120, or 990, or if you don't know, you can just select not sure, other, and any of this information can be changed at a later time if you would like. Second field under company type is the industry, so as you start typing, industries will appear. Paul's Plumbing is in the heating, is in the plumbing, heating, and air conditioning industry. We can click save our contact information. So here we have two different types of emails just like we have two different types of addresses. So the first email is your company email where you want QuickBooks to contact you. The second email is your customer facing email. So this is the email that will appear on your sales forms such as invoices etc. So wherever you want your customers to email you that's your customer facing email where you want QuickBooks to email you that's your company email company phone number this is going to be your customer facing phone number that shows up on your sales form so enter that here and then if you would like to show your website address on your sales form you can enter it there as well okay once you have all that information entered click save okay and then finally our company address um, enter your company address here uh, this is your uh, legal address should be the one on your, I'm sorry, this is your company address for QuickBooks Online purposes. Um, then you also have your customer facing address. Again, customer facing means it'll appear on your sales form. So this is the address you want your customers to know about. And then finally, you have a legal address. And this is what should be on your tax return, on your 1099s, on your W 2, etc. So for many companies, these addresses will all be the same. So once you finish that, we can click save and then the final optional section is to set your marketing preferences with Intuit. I'll leave that up to you if you would like to do that or not. Great so we've saved everything we've entered our company information we can click done that'll take us back to our dashboard.
And that's all that's to it. That's all that there is to entering your company information in QuickBooks Online. So this was our first of 45 free QuickBooks Online tutorials. To find the other tutorials, you can Google Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials. To get a free trial subscription to QuickBooks Online, we've included a link below this video. I appreciate your time and hope to have you visit again in one of our other QuickBooks Online tutorials.